Welcome to the Tone Jerks Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gower, and with me today, we got... Kyle McIntyre. All right, Kyle, uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just two for today. Uh, no. No, no guess. I was waiting for someone else. This is getting kind of old. <laughs> oh, no. fuck, it's all stale, man. <laughs> stale mate, maybe. Stale might. <laughs> all right, all right, ask the question. All right, go, question. Give it to me, baby. Feed me. Feed me the rock. <laughs> I'm ready to go. All right, Kyle, what is new in your world? What is shaking? What is grooving? I'm glad you asked. Wasn't expecting this, but I got a few things, actually. <laughs> I wasn't expecting, but I wrote, wrote some notes down. Um, I got my 3D printer going. Oh, okay. So, got, it's been like a year and a half or more that I've... I've I, I ran it to fix a part yeah. on the machine, Yeah, which is kind of weird. It's like... How do you do that? The f- machine's broken, but yeah, you, it was you a part. It to... was tough because... They're becoming sentient. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I, it, a part had broken on the feed, on the actual feeding device. I don't know what they actually call it. It broke, and it was just hanging on there by like a thread. Okay. So, and this is like the regular ABS plastic you'd find on just about anything. Printed it with PLA plastic, and yeah, it worked fine. It's actually. It, everything it's funny everything's black on the machine except for this one thing that's green it's mm-hmm. like well i didn't have black so but oh, you, well. you got it going again you got yeah so that, that's your, working your your gamer pc there you got yeah. it all going and uh, cranking along yeah so i was i was just like fuck it i'm i had seen okay, okay i want to i want to get some more volkas so the korg volkas yeah you have the beats i have the beats yeah. i want to get i think the bass and then just like the analog synthesizer so just kind of. So these just, are like little, like I don't know, kind of like maybe like maybe the size of like a Strymon. Strymon, like maybe a little bit wider. Yeah, wider, maybe, but not as deep. Mm-hmm. Kind of like little, like plastic. They're small kinda, and kinda. They're, they're cool. They they don't have like weighted keys or anything. They're all just touch keys. So yeah. they're really simple. Cool way to make music and yeah. sounds and stuff like that. So I want to get a couple more of those. And I was there's a website you can go to to where people host things that like oh this is what I created. You can take the file. Put it on your in your slicer program, which that's what it's called. It's called yeah. a slicer, where it takes, it tells basically it tells the printer what to print. Yeah, and um, got it in there. I, I basically I made a stand. I, I I downloaded a stand. So I had seen them on Reverb yeah. for like uh, like hundred bucks. I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's wood. You know, okay, like, oh, that, yeah, that'd be cool. For... So you put, stand for the Volcas. You can put them in there, and then you can. It, it, instead of having work on one individually, you can have all three of them stacked really closely. And then chain them all together and stuff like that. Because they're small. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I, I found a file that I'm like, okay, that's manageable. It's a bunch of pieces that you can just basically bolt together and then the bolts hold it against the Volcas and the Volcas become part of the structure. So gotcha. three of them and they start from flat to like 45 to 90. So it does this like... Okay, yeah. Kind of so, like you would see like synth. Yeah, like, like a, a Euro rack or yeah, yeah. Like when people kind of have those setups. I guess but it's not just Euro like rack, a mini, mini like yeah. setup and stuff like that. So it looks, it looks legit. I, but I got to buy those two others. I've seen, yeah, stuff like that on like uh, Reddit music battle stations, uh-huh. our music battle stations. Like pretty cool stuff. It's like with these huge synth racks and stuff like that. We can yeah. change shit together. I'm like, it goes, yeah, like you said, it goes like flat 45, 90. And yeah. Then, but they're huge devices yeah like, this is like kind of like that same idea but like a lot smaller little Volca so things. someone designed it and i printed it out and then i just have to get the other two and bolt it all together and it's gonna be fun are you so. using the volca beats mm. for recording no well because uh yeah i guess that's something else new i guess i don't yeah. want to like bury the lead here you, you you bought reason right yeah are you reading my notes uh you have or my mind you have three things written down there, so I hope and you the, have more. My handwriting's horrible. <laughs> I hope you have more that you can talk about this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like nothing else. <laughs> you know, I can't forget those there's three things. There's probably a total of ten words on your page. <laughs> those are the only ten I know. I just recycle. by the seat of our pants here. We don't always prep, and uh, this is one of those episodes. <laughs> I didn't want to forget those ten things. There you go. Um, I hate about you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, take it easy. All right. Um, so I downloaded reason i got my uh license yeah you bought it okay so 400 bucks that's i know that's always like a that's the clinker <sighs> but you know what i think it's worth it I've, I've already made some shit that i'm like i've already made like a bunch of masterpieces yeah posting it on uh soundcloud i'm making a fucking fortune 
I'm getting a lot of hits. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the the Bitcoin to flow right in. The, the, sound, <laughs> the Bitcoin. That's, uh, I don't know how it works. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so <laughs> people are just start hitting you up. Yeah, can you make a beat? Have you looked up that Fiverr stuff? It's, I think it's what it's called, Fiverr. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. It's a website. Isn't it a website where you can like commission things, commission or, things mm-hmm. like art? You can do maybe like yeah, I don't know, music. I'm I, assuming. I, I watched some videos where like some guy, he's a YouTube dude, and he'll make an impossible bass solo, and he'll have he'll like get pick ten people and pay them whatever they want to do this impossible solo where he uses like two hands to to do the bass solo. Yeah. And then <laughs> he'll have the guy do it, but you have to send him a video of him doing it. And so these guys are just doing like, they're tapping, they're getting really creative to make this thing happen. So he has someone else like hold the fret. Yeah. Like two people holding the fretboard while he's playing. Like, I don't think I've seen that then. I, I'm thinking, uh, I thought Fiverr was just a website you can pay people to do stuff. That, yeah, but he jokes around on it and he'll- Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll like, play, if, he'll you, post. if you guys can play this, I'll yeah. pay you this money. But they don't know he, they're being, I guess, hosted online. Gotcha. Maybe they do. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Back to reason. Yes. Um, ah, sidetracked there. Um, so I got the full. Or I guess I had the full, but I'm not in the trial anymore. Um, I downloaded. I, I basically um, updated the firmware in my Korg. I was like reading up on something. I'm like, oh, that's right. There's probably firmware that needs to be updated. And gotcha. this thing, I think, is like three years old. Never. Mm-hmm. It's like the factory update. Yeah, There's a bunch of hoops I had to jump through, and but it's up, it's updated. I don't know it's any difference, but yeah. But so, <laughs> to go off of that, I updated updated the firmware in my uh, Axe FX two, yeah, XL plus, um, which XL is cool um, because I think the last update they, they that they did, which is the Aries update or whatever, it's supposed to be like some of the like amp features or whatever or like the amp like sounds from the um axe fx3 yeah and then they even said like this will be the last update that we do they said like dang you know it, it's a it's a what, four five-year-old product they're like and then it's like why you know it's done it's cool it sounds good Not like people have been using it like the way it has been you know i mean the thing is it sounded good when i first got it and then yeah. it had a really really old uh, firmware. The guy, like, I don't think I ever updated it. Yeah. Anyway, so and so I got it and I updated it to the newest one. And people like on the forum were like, I mentioned this in our uh, Facebook group, but people on the forum were just like, "Man, this sounds so fucking good. Thanks, Cliff." But this is the guy from Fractal who's on the forums. Like, thanks for doing this. You really love your, you know, uh, you know, product, product and you or... love your job. You love the people who buy your stuff. <laughs> Forever a fan type thing. And like blowing this guy up. I'm like. Man, this thing must sound great. And so I changed it and, and, and downloaded it. I'm like, no difference. And they're no. like, man, this sounds like a real amp. I'm like, didn't you say that the last time? Like these guys are saying, like, oh man, this is this is it. This is even more like a real amp. This is even more realer and even more like perfecter. And it's even more like on pointer. It's more ampery. Yeah. It's like I'm like, people are saying it's like, oh, the amps. I'm like, oh, there, there's certain things that they can't add, like a certain like reverbs and like crazy or delays and stuff like that. Yeah. But just the processing power can't do, but they updated the amps to make them more lifelike. I can't tell fuck it down. <laughs> I'm probably because I'm Maybe not, you, when you have you recorded it and done I, playback? No, or? not yet. Okay. I just I've I've played it through my uh uh Yamaha HS5s and played them through my Sony MDRs. No difference. I, I, I was like, I, maybe I just, I should have done like a test to see the difference. But I'm like, I just think it's funny in the forums that they're like, this firmware update, man, it's fucking, it's the best. I'm like, I think it's just people convincing themselves that like, yeah, my Axe FX2 is still, it's the best. I don't even need to get that three. I, I mean, you don't. <laughs> Nobody does. The Axe FX2 is still really fucking good. <laughs> and then, but the three is, apparently better but i'm like how much better can it be and like how much like with this modeling and i was saying about like i bet helix people um are like oh yeah when they did an update recently when they added more amps and stuff like that people were like yeah. oh yeah this is it this is the only piece of equipment you ever need this is it this is the best one it sounds like the amp is in the room 
<laughs> cool. Are you, okay. And then they get the next step. Like, this sounds like the amp is even in the rumor. <laughs> it sounds like it's, I'm sitting on it. It sounds like, oh my God, the amp is a part of me. <laughs> is that even part real? I'm like, I don't know. You could just say like, oh, it's cool. Thanks for the update. Whatever you did, I don't know, maybe. Or just it, don't say anything at all. Yeah, and I was just thinking, it's like, and the, the forum is like yesterday when it was posted. Um, by the time I downloaded it, when I got off work, it was like six or seven pages long of people just like, just kissing. Praising. Like, kids like, this is it, yo, oh, this is the best day up in the world, the Axe Effect 2. We don't even need the three, but I will buy one because I'm a loyal customer. <laughs> <laughs> don't even need it, but it's like, why did you even uh, it. had the tack on tag onto that? Anyway, so you like got the firmware update. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't notice anything. Cool. I all right. Yeah, I, I think I it. Guess it, it's better. Maybe just like it updates this response time. I don't know. I probably should read into what I actually did. Yeah, but I think it has better. Oh, okay. I, I did read. It has better sweep on like the the modulation. The, uh, the like because okay. before it was like kind of dra- it, it didn't go all the way where you wanted to go. I guess. Yeah, the I little, want, Yeah, okay. the the pitch shifter. I don't know. It's like stuff like that. Is it cool? There, oh, I bet there's somebody probably that was bitching about it, and then they yeah. finally like had that update. And they're like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this so is what I needed. Up, updated that. Um, I put. So I actually. I got the uh we talk about it all the time, but the uh, Scarlet. I got it back from you. You you borrowed it. Yeah. And then now you can actually use it with your reason. Yeah. And so I have the MIDI cables, I have the TRS cables that you gave me. So I have everything set up and, and it's it actually working. It sounds out. really good. Yeah, 'cause I and I had it all there, right? And then um I'm just getting by with like the I think I had the eighth inch jack out of the 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 computer monitor yeah, into the speakers. To, yeah, to just like split. R- R- RCA into each. There you go. And you're like, yeah, yeah this is cool. It's better than was, just the speaker. I was range. playing something and I'm like, oh, I was playing kind of like a muddier sounding synth. And so I was like, is it making this like break up? Yeah. But I heard this like, like background and like in the background. Like this fizz kind of. Yeah. And I'm like, it sounded like a dirty needle on like a record player. Yeah. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. That like, doesn't fit this synth. What the fuck's, like, what's that noise? So I'm like, ah, I bet it's just this setup I have. So I just did it all and get it, get it all set up and I played it again. I'm like, gone. I'm like, it's yeah. actually clean. It you're sounds like, oh. so much better now. Because I was saying to you, I'm like, you need to just have your Claret or your Scarlet set up because you can run everything out of there mm-hmm. and then have your monitors always set up instead of you're like, oh, I can have it just run out of the monitor for some reason. Yeah. It's like, it, yeah, I mean, this Scarlet is going to be way better for it. And you can change and have yeah. your own monitor mixes and change for whatever you do is going to be like, oh, okay, cool. If I'm watching like YouTube, just change this mix and have it here. If, I, yeah. if I'm playing guitar or just my synth then I can actually run through here, through MIDI and do this, I'm like... Yeah, have build these yeah. mixes and have them set up, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm just not gonna hook up this claret. Well, I, I, it was like a couple of days, just didn't have it. I mean, <laughs> it was weeks. Okay, yeah. hold on. And then I was like, and okay. I didn't, I didn't have re- reason set up, so why would I? So like, oh, so why? I bought it, and then like, I think the next day, I was like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm back into playing and stuff. I'm like, sounds like shit. Yeah, <laughs> and then so I'm like, oh, it actually sounds better, and you're able to like have your monitors instead of turning the levels up and down on yeah. each time you have them set and then you can turn the monitor yeah. main master mix on the Scarlet. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Scarlet's really cool. Those yeah. are, I'm stoked on it. Yeah, it's a good buy. I'll I'll clean up the desk and get the wa- cord management going and I'll take a picture. I'll post it. Yeah, and you get your little mini log and yeah. then your also Volca set up yeah. going too. Fuck. Yeah, it's cool. So, yeah, well, Ryan, what's new with you? Well, I guess uh, part of it had to do with uh, yeah, your 4i4 Scarlet um, I borrowed that. Uh, and yeah, you could hear from the last episode. Um, part of the reason why, like, eh, and it's also like, pe- whatever. We don't do a lot of like online um, hangouts or Skype interviews because, or not interviews, but just with people and guests and stuff like that. It's a bitch, let me tell you. <laughs> and the way we were doing it before was a pain in the ass because I'm like, uh, I was bringing my... Um, what uh, eight input uh, claret over here that has like a four space rack that has my fucking fractal and it has my power supply in it. I'm br- lugging that over here or like um, 
And then I'm like, okay, cool, get it all set up. And then I'm like, okay, what we were doing before, which I guess was like a more caveman esque type of thing of me doing, just because I'm not used to like uh, reading, <laughs> um, of using the, the claret and <laughs> my, my, my brain, my focus, my um, focus right in the interface and all the fucking Pro Tools and tracking and doing all the like, I mean, the, these claret things. And I'm like, even just like, you know, I think personas and all this stuff like that I, I i was just so used to working on like a mbox too and yeah. i never had these capabilities never wanted to do the stuff like this um there's able to do like what we were doing before was i was running out of the headphone jack of like and routing things on my macbook to an input so i can always keep a, a master track of like the uh, incoming call and then i can use that for reference and if they send me a track i can match it up cool if they don't nice. send me a track i could still add you know um clean it up because i'm like you know um sometimes they're just talking on their uh, earbuds or whatever and i can clean it up with a like, little bit of gate compression eq stuff like that and make it sound like it has been which no complaints so far and then it's just a pain I have in one. the ass um okay cool good bit um it, it's it's been in pain, a pain in the ass and i haven't been wanting to do it but it was i was like okay well you have this thing let me um the Scarlet's already here, so I don't have to bring my Claret. I think what I can do is there's line outputs out of there. So I was thinking of like, oh, we can use the Zoom. I'll record these and go line output into here, get the call, and I was going to wire, you know, a lot more wiring. So I was going to use two devices plus the laptop and internet and hangouts and stuff like that to record things. I was doing, I was fucking around with it and trying to figure out why the line output from the H5 wasn't going uh, a certain level to the line input of the Scarlet, and I was like, I was getting all frustrated. I'm like, I have a TRS and these fucking things. I don't. I'm like, they're not. And I was like, working, and I went to watch like a YouTube thing, and somebody said like, oh yeah, there's also a function on the Scarlet, which is nice that wasn't there previous, but on Clarets, um, where you can do loops. And I was like, to me, loops are like, oh, either loop like a diddle looper, yeah. or like a loop on like a you know, um, like a boss switcher or something like that. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh. Oh, what the hell this is and i just kept watching the video i'm like yeah so you can record whatever's on your um screen or whatever and you can do incoming calls and you can use this if you're doing an interview or a podcast or whatever and then i was like oh and so you can record audio like from a video and then it's like oh you just have to set up your mixer and line inputs and stuff like that so inputs digitally within the scarlet to feed and then you match those up in your daw to make a loop track and then yeah, yada yada. Why would they call it a loop track? Though? I don't know. It's That's probably it's it to me. It it doesn't make sense from a guitar standpoint. But I'm no. sure from an audio engineer, which I'm uh, playing one on TV. <laughs> so yeah. far, so good. And so far, the podcast has been working, and it's working even better now because of Scarlet Four I Four. I'm using. Yeah, pat yourself on the back there, bro. It's very cool. I'm very very stoked on it. So I'm able to bring um, my um, MacBook and just a. Uh, the, my external drive and a couple of cables and it's easy and I just use that and we use our normal setup it's a ho not a whole lot of mess around yeah. and even the incoming audio that uh, from Alex on the last episode sounded great awesome, but yeah. he was uh, gracious enough to uh, record his own audio and send it and I was able to match it up no problemo so maybe we'll take that to uh, Nam that uh the focus right I don't think we need to one? because no? we'll see people in person but we can yeah. also just like you know, make it more frequent and have uh, friends of ours who are not uh, with us in San Diego. They're no longer with us. <laughs> the way I, I, I said that. They're gone. People, people who aren't here in San Diego with us could be on the show and I make it a little bit easier and I might be a little more um, jumping on that. And so we can have guests. I really do like how we have guests who come on the show, but mm -hmm. we don't make it an interview because we're not that type of show. We make them like, hey, you got topics? Uh, come on. So. Uh, we might bug a few more people to have them come on the show because I think it's fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a lot of friends and I like them on the show. So I'm very, um, yeah, I'm happy about that uh, Scarlet. So you're using it and you're getting, uh, you know. Yeah, I'm getting some use out of it. Use out of it and so am I. So yeah, those Scarlets are very, very cool. Uh, let's see. So uh, I did sell a few things of oh. yours. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> so, uh, sold a Line 6 Pocket Pod. Kyle had one of those, and we used it for, like, the demo where I compared that to the Fractal. Um, and You still put that it was brand new, right? No, it mint was in box? I did mint. It wasn't new, but it was in mint condition, pretty much. I'm like, I, I, t I put, like, I opened it just to test it out that it works. It still has the plastic on the screen. On the screen. It, it has the batteries and earbuds 
if you and a CD if you want to look, <laughs> if do your have computer a, still has an optical drive, a, yeah, a jam track if you want to do that. And then people are like, somebody bought it, and like you know, got decent money for it. Um, and then uh, sold the TC Electronic Grand Magus, 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 Magus. Ma- Magus. It's not Magus. I know that. <laughs> it's that distortion. It's the analog distortion from TC Electronic. It's one of the like new Behringer owns analog. That's what they call it. Uh, uh, sure. You open it up, you're like, I don't think yeah. so, pale. I mean, there might be like a resistor in there. That's analog. Yeah. Like us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm but just... yeah, it, I sold that. Uh, also, uh, a twofer with the uh, MXR double shot. <sighs> I think we both decided that one was... Uh, On the chopping block. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we played it the first time. Like, this is turned into a difficult situation. Sounds like my amp is like 40 feet away in a tube. It does like, not. And I was like, <laughs> there okay. was sewer too. Yeah, you had a lot of dialing plum. in. Luckily, I had a ton of knobs so you can dial it in and find a good sound, but you couldn't get two good sounds. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, so I d- uh, bundled that up on, uh, sold the Pocket Pod on Line 6 Pocket Pod on Reverb. That was easy, normal Reverb transaction. Yeah. Um, not a lot of haggling. The guy paid kind of pretty much the asking price and the shipping ended up being more because I had to put it in a box instead of the, you know, the uh, yeah. bubble mailer. Yeah, it was a big box. Um, yeah, and I was like, well, it's this. It's in a box. It's pretty much brand new. Yeah. Like, I could take it out and just shove it in one of those bags if you want, but you're not going to get the box. Experience. Yeah. But he paid the shipping and stuff like that. No problem. So the Grand Magus and Double Shot MXR uh, didn't get a whole lot of cash for those. And that's fine, because I pretty much got what you paid for the Double Shot. Mm-hmm. And then the Grand Magus was, was free. Was uh, like a here you go, please take these. <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I think it was like seventy bucks or something like that for the two of them. Okay, so not, too, not too bad. I mean, I was getting uh, somebody offered me five dollars. No, it was ten dollars for the uh, Grand Magus. Sounds about I was right. Like, um, on, Although on, I, on, I feel you, buddy. I need to. Get- <laughs> I'm like this is a waste of my time. I could not even get a Cobb salad. For ten dollars, and if I'm gonna drive to meet you up, like can't even slobber all over my cob salad. Like if you said, if you said, <laughs> if you said twenty, I'd be like, yeah, for sure. Even if you said fifteen, I might be like, all right, you know, you're, you're getting closer. Yeah. Um, ten dollars though. If you said like ten dollars and uh, you know, three tall cans, I might be like, all right, you're speaking my language here. But and like you were, dry, you still come and pick it up. Yeah. But anyway, so I sold it to a guy and he was like super stoked. He's like, man, these are going to be tight. I'm like, why do you want both of these? Yeah. <laughs> but he took them. It was fine. Easy offer up. Uh, it's very hit or miss because you get a lot of just uh, shit offers. And people say, hey, is this, a, it, it's like uh, the meme of the Facebook guy. I'm like, hey, is this available? I want it. Yes, it is. I'll like, uh, will you take this much? I'm like, yes, I will. Let's meet up today. Gone. They just disappeared. There's, yeah. They're like the Homer. They're part of the into, rapture. Into they the just... into the the head. The rapture <laughs> <laughs> took home. Just... I want to buy these. <laughs> anyway, so it got those gone. I think that was you know it was good. You know, uh, we uh, you know it's like a it's a step for you, Kyle, to realize like these are things I'm not going to use and I will not miss them. And but ha- and I have you? did not sell them. So have you have you uh, missed them? Which ones were they again? Yep, there you go. They, they don't even, he doesn't even, they don't even register to him anymore. They don't even care. Yeah, one of them was a, an MXR. Carried the coveted MXR brand. I know, he had to, he had to let it go. It was, uh, it was, yeah, there was all right. Um, before you leave today, you want to grab that Prime distortion? <laughs> I could put that on the chopping block. Hell but yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, that was cool. It was good to get, you know, get those gone. And um, I have not paid you that money yet. Well, I think you can hold on to it. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for something I'm, else uh, I'm a nice guy so. uh, yeah yeah but it's just for a little tip I got yeah. a tip for you pal <laughs> you have to say that every time I know hey, hey it's, it's like a, it's like a part of you now it is well got tip for actually you, it is <laughs> anyway uh, so this is kind of a what's new for both of us a uh, little update on the pedal board action for Kyle McIntyre. Oh, yeah. Coming in uh, the, with the, the pedal board, Kyle versus pedal board. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, made the jump up. So I think we Went talked- to the PT Junior. Yeah. I think we talked about it, like uh, jumped up uh, yeah, we for won't. a gig. You jumped up to my Nano Plus, which yeah. I was able to add another pedal. Your, uh, your, your solid go-to setup has been tuner, uh, ground control, serpents, Comp- yep. uh, compressor. Yep. Uh, the- uh, 
fuck. Westwood. Westwood from dying in here. Uh, earthquake. Come on. Earthquake devices. <laughs> I'll lo- take it over. Throw uh, me a life And then here. the uh, base driver from uh, from Tech, Tech, Tech Twenty One. Yeah, the Sands Amp. And so um, it's been good. Just keep them all on, except for the tuner. <laughs> Hunky dory. Here we no, go. Thanks for reminding me not to keep yeah, that thing like, on. Like, I like, can't pick it I can't get this down on you, Bill. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Solid. That's your go-to. You need to have that. But we're like, okay, we're getting more and more. We're like, okay, we want to um flex a little bit on bass and get yeah. more sounds out of it because i feel like you know yes a three-piece punk band rock band whatever the hell we are um we're we want to expand more and make the live show you know Breathe. that much yeah and like give us time so it's more like theatrical i want to say or make the sound make it a show and the whole thing and I'm like okay maybe like a noise in between songs maybe make it like you know atmospheric at parts or whatever and it's like some of that is gonna like fall onto bass i can do a lot with my fractal setup but i can't do everything especially when i need to change do this and boom, 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 change get the pickups and oh shit uh, yeah and i'm like okay um and in that downtime we could just say you know like crowd banter and stuff like that but that's yeah you know i'm not gonna do that every time you know i'm not gonna um, do that every time so um uh, we, so uh, we last time last show we added on the rubber neck from DOD onto yeah. the pedal. You know, we st- one step above the nano into the nano plus. Yeah, and we uh, were talking about it, and we finally did it. So the P- uh, PT Junior that we have here, that kind of just mess around fun board. Um, okay, let's we're, make. We're, we're giving it a home on the stage. Yeah, let's let's bring this out. I think we're ready for it. Uh, it's like a pretty woman kind of thing. You know, we're gonna dress it up, make it look real good. Yeah, something like that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but we're uh, putting it on the streets. Okay. <laughs> or on stage. Something like that. Uh, I'm trying to follow yeah, you here, yeah, pal. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry. sorry. Not, I, I don't even know what the hell I'm saying. You you, you, you extended the olive Woo. branch for me with that uh, pedal situation. I'm trying to come back with you. But <laughs> keep on going. <laughs> keep on trucking. Uh, so w- one of the things that held us back is because of the power supply situation. Yeah. You have... I Either a, couple a gigantic <laughs> power supply that is not going to work for a pedal train junior, which is the uh, it, the it's, Phoenix. It's or the whatever. length of <laughs> yeah. It's like the Phoenix from Walrus. Very cool looking, but and it has all it, the power you would ever need in the world. It, but it, dang, it, and it, I, I would want. I'd have to have that thing on top of the board. Yeah, so I have to get a bigger board now. And uh, yeah, and then you also have the. Um, Iso brick, iso brick, <laughs> mini iso brick. So it's that you're kind of on both sides of the spectrum there, but it's it's cool. The iso brick would totally power what you want. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't want to rely on that little yeah wall wart cable that goes into because people don't think of like oh power you know, iso brick that's totally cool. Well, with the uh, power supply, the 18 volt or whatever that is that goes into it is so short. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I'm like, we're not... It's like not even a three-foot cable Yeah, we're so. not... Yeah, I'm like, we're not at the, you know, luxury of, like, not always a, having a power outlet right yeah. next to the, you know, microphone so you can put your pedal board there. So I'm like, okay, that's probably not going to work. But you did have a CS12 True Tone. Yeah. So uh, I... Uh, got it from a buddy, got, never used it. Yeah, I had it, in, had it in the box forever. I tried putting it on a bigger board... That I wanted to make, which I just gave up on doing that. But um, yeah, traded it. Yes, went to a different buddy. Traded uh, for a uh, was it the the Voodoo, Voodoo Labs, Labs the two X two or the uh, no the Pedal Power Two Plus. Oh, Jesus Christ, uh, Pedal Power Two Plus, and that was exactly what we wanted because the power I'm out. You can just take over the, from here. The Two Plus has like a higher yeah uh, milliamps on two of the outputs. And so we're like, oh, perfect, cool. Uh, traded it to Co. We didn't say that, did we? We weren't going to. Well, now yes. we have to. God Co. Damn it. Co. From Co. The flip- Schneider from the Flip and Flippers yeah. podcast. So we met up with him, and because uh, he wanted a bigger power supply, CS12 yeah. has that, has more outputs, more um, uh, different voltages. Like you can go 12, you can go 18, nine. It's got like that. AC on there. Yeah, and it's then got uh, some crazy. It ones. also has like 500 milliamps, which is. Uh, twice of what the Pedal Power 2 Plus mm-hmm. has, so if he's going to run Strymons or whatever. Uh, it was just something that was like, okay, we don't think we're going to y- use that for the baseboard. It was kind of a cool situation. It, it, we actually were talking about it at that show we both played yeah. together um, at that Himmelberg's show. Yeah, the um, last one that he we did with him. Yeah. And we're like, and he, he was talking about power supply, and I was, I'm like, oh, well, what do you got? Oh, I think I have a, 
uh, a two plus, was it the two plus two? I want to say the two plus two. Is that what it is? No, that's not it. God damn it. Uh, pedal power two plus. Two plus. Just leave it at that. Don't say two. <laughs> <laughs> I should know what's mine, right? Yeah. I need to study that thing a little more and we'll talk about that. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah, it was just like, oh, well I have this, you have that. Let's make a deal. Scratch my back, I scratch you, <laughs> yeah. And so we did. Um, uh, and we uh, put on the board the other night and uh, practiced with it. And yeah, so you got that all wired we up. We experimented here in the uh, jerk jerk lounge. Yeah, we were trying uh, different pedals because what we really want is um, something, I think we talked about it, but it's like something to add noise in between and intro songs and outros and stuff like that for bass. But we don't want like, uh, you know, Dance Dance Revolution up there to be like, oh, hit like you know, four different things to make a noise. And like then one on, or go. two if, if, if you have to. basically what it's going to be, it's like, okay, make this like kind of, you know, like dwell and swell up and go crazy and oscillation is probably what we're thinking of delay. Yeah. And then it's need to cut out because we're going to boom right yeah. into the song. It's not going to be like, cool, click, 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 cool, click, 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 boom. And we go into the, sh- like, yeah. It needs to be like, boom, because that's just going to like, cool, that was a great intro. Yeah. Are you ready now, Kyle? Here we go. It's <laughs> yeah. like, just fucking silence now. It's like, um, and so far the rubber neck was really what we were uh, wanting for that. But we noticed that the last gig, uh, feedback from uh, Johnny Ray, uh, he's always honest guy. Uh, so when it comes to taxes, I don't think he pays. Uh, and taxes? <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm just throwing him out there no he's, he's very always honest with like that's the kind of person you need at a show uh, he's like he's like that's that was cool kyle you're adding you know you're the rubber neck and stuff like that it's like yeah but you just cut out yeah random parts like you didn't have control over it and so we were trails and stuff like that yeah and so we're like oh, okay cool we were thinking of adding reverb and stuff like that and i knew you could do a f- stuff in the effects loop of because the, the rubber yeah, neck has an effects loop. send and return on mm-hmm. a was it a just on on one uh, on a TRS yeah you know, split so you can put something in there or run a whole chain in there so but it's really only on the re- repeats and so yeah. we thought we could add anyway so it just didn't work didn't really we, sound we that threw great. the descent in there through different reverbs and stuff like that it didn't work and I'm like and this still is not it and we were just like sitting I'm like fuck what the hell are we doing here and then we were like oh let's add in um the hummingbird trim sounds cool but not what we're looking for at all no. it has, then we can even add the expression to ramp things up and down I'm like that's not what we're wanting uh, flanger nope that's not what we're wanting either like we, we and then we're like <laughs> oh boss slicer that'd be really cool we, we're playing it and it sounds really cool with bass but we're like this is not what we fucking want and so we yeah, kept like, why do I own any of these and so, but it's like <laughs> you know it's like some things are not going to work for live and so yeah. anyway so we, we roll it back and say okay we had the whole board filled up with shit, and you're like, are we even going to be able to use this? Because you have like eight, like, you know, so many fucking pe- eight pedals on there, plus the tuner, just an expression even. And you're like, Kyle, like, your feet are big. You're not going to be able to like, oh, cool, let me just like, di-. and like, you know, we talk about this all the time. And then we I'm got- not wearing my ballet shoes. And then we got to, like, into like practical thing. I'm like, okay, we start pulling things off. So we got it down to like, Flanger sounded cool on bass. I'm like, I don't think we're going to use it for- the yeah. intro and outro things or whatever, but I think it'd just be nice to have on there to throw into a song, just be like, okay, cool, a bridge or something. Um, so threw that on there, and then the DOD. So it's basically the same thing as the Nano <laughs> just on a bigger board. <laughs> plus, but there's room to grow. There's room to grow yeah. and flex. So we got it working, sent it good at uh, you know here at in your garage, and then we uh, took it to band practice. So wait, you want to take this part? Yeah. So set it all up. So I saw the flanger on there, um, plugged it in, no sound. So I have power, I have my bass going to it, yeah. everything looked great. Was not working. Yeah. Flipped it over, ch- okay, maybe I have one of the lower milliamps one select for like- it also has like a, was a, d- a dimmer? There's some, like, yeah, like there's a, some trim pots on the, ins- or, um, yeah, so you can bring it down, you can sag, sag some of yeah, the, yeah, that's what it, some of the, uh, outputs, outputs, so yeah, can, so like, starve it and make making it sure, look, okay, those were all the way up to nine, they weren't sitting at four or whatever, um, Still couldn't figure this thing out. So just started unplugging stuff and put it back together and it would play. And, All right, great. Set it back down, get everything, go to play again. This is before we're even practicing and it wouldn't turn on. I'm like, fuck. Like, what is, so I think it was like three or four, maybe even five times. Like, yeah, we're taking going apart over this. And then, then we started down. omitting pedals and bypassing. And then and it would play, make a noise, put it back down, start to play again. Nothing. What the fuck? So it turned out that it was the actual power from the wall. Well, that affected it too, and then also the um, I was noticing that the milliamp. So the the higher uh, milliamps, like the two fifty, 
yeah. the amp uh, come out of inputs or outputs five and six. Yeah. And then you had the rubberneck, which is the only digital pedal it that you had. It pulls a lot too. Yeah. And it was, you were coming out of like, you know, like four or something. Yeah. So it wasn't so the correct it wasn't one. The full, yeah. And so we're like, okay, switch that. And it started working. Well, that's a what bit sucks about they print it on the top, right? But then that's. It's under the under yeah the it's pedal under train. the aluminum yeah like the frame. So I'm like, oh, okay, it. well, okay, switch those and start working. But it was catching noise from the fan. That yeah, there was a fan. That wall. Yeah, and then da, we changed it around, got this, and like, but we got it going and ended up totally bypassing the flanger. Didn't even try that at band practice, but we know that the rubber neck works. Yeah, and it sounded really cool. We're actually dialing it in a little bit better. So it's like trying to match the levels and how the uh, oscillation works because you can change that with the gain and tone and stuff like that. It actually is working a lot. Uh, so far, so good. So we know that the rubber neck sounds great added to the mix. So <laughs> yeah, we got five solid bass pedals. We're going to try and add more. But if you guys have any ideas of stuff to add, you know, let us know because we, you know, you know, our objective is to just add ambience and noise and stuff like that in between. But we want them like and if really you've been following just, along. I mean, you know my pedal uh, selection. No. Yeah, we we have a lot of dirt here. Actually, and, I'm willing and, to buy stuff too. Yeah, um, and we want stuff that's like really like a click. We'll turn it off. Yeah, it needs to be like it can't be like oh well this and this and this you know will will work. I'm like well the thing is we need it like. One, two, three, four. That's how quickly you need to turn it off. Yeah. Because <laughs> our songs are uh, 220, 200 BPM. That's the average. <laughs> so you got four <laughs> clicks, and that's how much time you have to turn that shit off. Um, so anyway, uh, Rubberneck is working really well. So I was telling Kyle, I'm like, yeah, you got a you got a little, little bit of work to do on that board. Yeah. And one thing that you noticed, you noticed that yesterday, cleanliness of the board helps out a lot organizing because yeah. the yeah. cables were fucking spaghetti well, it, it's still prototype and, right now i know but I'm uh, breadboarding the pedal board yeah and then we we're like we got a gig tomorrow so i think hopefully you clean zip it up. tie it up yeah hopefully and we'll just bypass the flanger well good thing i didn't zip tie shit because we moved things around yeah anyway so and there was like extra cables just hanging out i'm like get this yeah there was out of my life because we had uh, like you said up to eight pedals and then we took them all off i had like three extra cables still <laughs> didn't take them off yeah why and, would and, I? And, well yeah uh, anyway so well i'm busy dude uh yeah it's a lesson for bigger boards for you kyle you're gonna be adding more and you gotta be able to bypass those or like be able to like uh, troubleshoot. You're That's stress not, by, me not, out. Not, not bypass, but stress me out already. Yeah, you're you're getting there, Kyle. You're stepping into the world here. I think it's cool. I just kill me. Like the like, like just fucking end it right now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, I was thinking, uh, I'm gonna borrow it from Johnny, but uh, I think the Binford. Yeah, Co was using it at the show. That was like his only like uh, non drive pedal that he used. Mm-hmm. It was cool because he was kind of doing what we want is like adding stuff like that to the show yeah. so the binford from pelican noiseworks i think we're going to give that a shot because it has a momentary momentary option <laughs> momentary. how many of those blogger lights you I'm had kind of uh, some my second i'm going to crack open my third one here but um, um, <laughs> uh yeah now mo- momentary option so uh, I think we're gonna borrow that from Johnny and give that a shot so and maybe we might have to own our own but let's uh get into some topics what do you say Kyle I'm I'm ready and willing. All right, so this first one is kind of like I don't know, loose topic. I think I was talking about it with you. Yeah. I'm like I don't even really know how to introduce. It. I guess it's like a um, product, like marketing, maybe like mumbo jumbo for for like specific like things. Right? Yeah, so, like things geared towards specific tasks for, or whatever. For example, like running shoes. Yeah, or, or um, was something that like brought up to me is like the road uh. Procaster mic and like that Procaster mixer because so, they're meant for podcasters. Yeah, because if you have a podcast, you can get the Procaster mic. Yeah, for casting. And um, you know, I'm like I kind of downplay it. Um, but you know, uh, I know guitar knobs. They use this stuff. Yeah, stuff sounds good. It looks cool. It looks professional. But I'm like, you don't need. That. You, you know that they don't need us to drop their name, right? That's fine. Um. Uh, They've dropped our name a couple times. Yeah, but we don't have to give back. To yeah, yeah, but they, we don't have <laughs> to reciprocate. And yeah. uh, anyways, that's a cool show. But they always drop it because I think they are sponsored or something. But yeah. I'm like, okay, you don't need to have a yeah. Procaster mic because it's meant for podcasting. We are using, what, the Sennheiser E- E-335s or whatever? 835s. E-835s, not E-835s, the- E-835s. Yeah. Or sometimes I use um, just SM- SM58s. Yeah. 
and we use uh, the Zoom Handy Recorder H5. <laughs> yeah, it sounds and good. I do a lot of like, I mean, the uh, you know, the heavy lifting is done a lot from Pro Tools. Yeah. So I do a lot of cleanup. I do um, EQ. Just stock plugins are very sh- good in Pro yeah. Tools. 2019 i would hope so for 500 dollars. yeah uh, <laughs> well okay so so <laughs> so this this whole yeah topic is kind of like i don't know is is do that, you really need it is to that be... yeah is that marketing just uh jargon is it actually like worth it is any of this stuff like you know you don't have to use these things for a specific task yeah. so like the procaster mic i guess if you really wanted to use it for vocal recording and singing and stuff like that i'm sure it would be good um because it's just kind of like, like a... Like, can you walk? It's can a, you run in, in, in walking shoes? Or can I, you walk in running shoes? I'm wearing running shoes right now, and I'm sitting on my fat ass drinking a beer. <laughs> so, yes, multi-purpose. <laughs> yeah. Okay, running shoes. Okay, let's 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 do that. All right. Um, uh, I have several different ones for different uh, things. Yeah, I, for I usually black tie affairs or... Yeah. <laughs> I have, uh, I have like, running shoes that have, like, uh, almost no rubber uh, sole. On, uh-huh. Like well, it, the, is it the tread like on foam them? or something? Yeah, or? they're just like foam. That's really meant for running on you know treadmill or treadmill. whatever. But they are just cushy, cushy, cushy. And then I have uh, trail running shoes, which help when we were going on hikes and stuff like that. It has more yeah. grip and stuff like that. It has more jagged teeth. It looks like yeah. they literally look prevent like, you from rolling. Yes, your ankles. Um, just my cankles. Uh, <laughs> they, my cankles. It looks like jagged shark teeth on there, but it helps you grip, I guess. Yeah. So far, so good. And then I also have some with like harder rubber rubber soles, uh, have very little, I mean, have foam and hard rubber so I can run on, um, you know, street or sidewalk or whatever and not just like destroy them. So you're saying, yes, you give into the hype I and do, the marketing. Yes, somewhat, something. So running shoes, yes, yeah. I would do that, but I'm not going to go running. And the thing is, if I had to run in a pair of, uh, you know, Converse Chuck Taylors, I could. I would be... Hurting. Yeah. Had broken bones, probably. I was wearing after. a pair of Vans the other day. I like the old school type Vans. I'm like, man, these are not comfortable compared to my Nikes. Yeah. I have I have turned into the old man to where I'm like, I wear like, you know, athletic shoes because they're comfortable every yeah. situation I can. <laughs> I wear them on stage. I wear them at work. I wear them just like hanging out. And then I wore Vans because I'm like, oh, these are a little more... Yeah, like cool and fashion forward like, and hip. Oh I'm like, oh my god, how do these kids do it? <laughs> well, okay, I guess bring it back to gear. Like, okay, so maybe more specifically, like bass pedals, maybe because I'm a bassist. Yeah, I like to think I am. Yeah, but you, I don't really own a whole lot of bass pedals. Yeah, actually, I have the bass driver. Yeah, and that's a very good one. It, yes, like it, it sounds stupid for guitar. It just doesn't sound. Yeah good it doesn't really do anything um that's i think that's my only bass pedal oh you have your bass wah which oh, we, okay we were yeah. gonna we were gonna put on the board the other day then we, we realized we, how yeah. x need it yeah x nay x nay which i think that might be kind of cool because you could but the thing is you'd have to hold down something and then do this oh we anyways there's yeah. there's there's a work in progress and we have real estate you know it's an open market there on that <laughs> pedal train junior yeah so you got to give us those suggestions. But, uh, you know, it's like your compressor. It's not a bass compressor. Yeah. Because there's a lot of like, I think Keeley does a bass compressor. Um, MXR does a bass compressor. And I do like that one. I still have that actually. And then, uh, but you use the Serpens, which is optical um, compressor. It's not really meant for anything. It's just a compressor, mainly geared towards guitar. Yeah. But it's obviously like. Well, they have like certain effects i guess let's say with mxr like you said they have they have the analog course and they have a bass course and i don't get that yeah because they have the um and also with boss they have the ce2 and the ce2b i had that or one or ceb2 I, I had that one and it was i think it had more of a low end mix on I would it i assume yeah so it's similar to the what you the, had one of those yeah and i sold it when did you have that i uh, I saw it probably about a year or two ago. So Shit. I know it was like before you got into effects. You fucker. You fucking asshole. Yeah, did you not fucking there's see a, that? There's I was a dude. Be into it. I think I brought it up before on the cast, but there's a dude who's selling like five of those bass pedals, the uh-huh. boss bass pedals. They're all the nasty, ugly brown Ugh. ones. 
and he's firm at like four fifty. If selling four, but he wants and he's selling him up. five for yeah, four fifty. Oh, five for four. Like, it's not too bad. I've seen them like. Ugh. I mean, the like, so, Johnny, do you want to split this? I'll just I'll just paint him. No, he won't split him up. And I mean, he's firm on the price. You and Johnny go in on it. Well, I, I think okay with bass. I think a lot of it has to do with mix. Yeah. You want to get a dry mix and stuff like that because without that, you'll lose low end really fucking quick. Yeah. And with your MXR one, is it the analog chorus? Yeah. That has a mix on it. So what's that? The difference between that and the bass one? Maybe has just uh, the bass has a that bigger sweep or something maybe it has more of a bass focused stuff I don't, I don't know lower know. end focused and then it's like okay there's no I don't think I've ever seen maybe Aguilar has one but it's like bass uh, delay really I've never seen a bass delay huh. but I'm like uh, how would they market that a delay is just a delay you know it's like hmm. you know um, I have heard this I don't know if it's true but I've seen it on a couple of forums uh, that the MXR bass compressor and MXR studio compressor that they came out with like a year or so ago. Yeah. They both had that, that you know, with the LED, with the meter reading of like, you know, how much it's reducing, you know. Uh, what do they call that? I don't even know what they call that. With the uh, meter. Yeah. I don't like know. like a graphic meter. Or... I should know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the DB too. meter. There you go. Sure. DB uh, gain reduction meter or whatever. It's cool. It goes from like green all the way to oh, yellow to red. That's danger zone. Oh no! Um, it's um, <laughs> danger zone. It's it's cool. They have that for the bass, and I I really do like it. And I you know it's it's a great great pedal. But I um, heard that the studio compressor, which is more marketed for guitars, it's the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, like, and we were like, it's the same fucking thing. It's the same fucking thing, you guys. <laughs> so one's uh, b- black and sparkly, and one's white. Yeah, and one says bass, and the other one says okay. Uh, just okay. Stu- that's it. And then people are like, yeah, it's the same fucking thing. Anyway, it could just be marketing that more people who have guitars are like, well, I'm gonna get this one because it's studio quality compressor, <laughs> and I have all my board. Maybe they meant studio apartment. Yeah, um, but anyways, <laughs> the, I mean, this, it's a cool one that bass compressor I haven't used it in a while but it's it was good I liked it it was good stopped working got it work got it, got it back they fixed it and then it's yeah. been working great ever since although it's been a year since I've opened it so maybe we should try it again and see if it's still working yeah but I mean it's with the ground control I haven't really felt the need for that yeah anyway and then I have uh, compressors in my fractal oh, okay okay the good updates <laughs> um, so uh, like what about bass drives uh, you haven't really felt the need for that because the no. one that you Westwood that you're using and that you love is great. Yeah, and that's not really a base. It's just a transparent drive. Yeah, a light drive, transparent I, light drive. I know Johnny's got some base drives. He's mm-hmm. got the uh, I don't know. I modded it. I can't remember which one. The O O B. Oh, the base one. O B seven or O B O B three. O B three. O B three. I don't know why the I said base seven. overdrive. Yeah. Yeah. For boss. Yeah. And uh, he's liking it from think, what he said. I think it's still on his board. Yeah. I think so. I think it's still I, on his I, board. I think it is. <laughs> I don't want to lie. I think it's still should, on his uh, board. You should go to more of his shows and you'd see. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Jesus Christ. It's a... Call he, a man out. Why don't you? Uh, yeah. I I don't know. There's like... Is it the Tronographic? What is it? That that one? The Rusty Box? That's not... Is that a bass? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's, it's just, a, it's just, just a, preamp. a preamp. Yeah. So he's using that one. But he has. Uh, yeah. What What are the difference between? I, I've seen bass preamps, right? So like, obviously dark glass. Well, yeah, and then dark. It's just they are. That's like a whole bass line That's focused all they, on lower frequencies. Yeah. So like I said, you could plug into the Sansamp bass driver, yeah. and it's fine. You could probably get it, but it's gonna be more of like a lower end, and like the it's like definitely more scooped because the mids like are so like I don't know on bass are less pronounced and need to be affected okay I don't know I, this is just me I would think like mids on bass are like okay leave that alone because it can get flubby on the low end and it can get crispy bullshit on the highs too much you want a little bit but not too much and that's where they kind of focus on whereas right. guitar is more focused on mids and sculpting those and maybe rounding out some of the low end and adding that in whereas like bass is like kind of shelving low end and kind of sculpting and like cutting some of the highs mm-hmm. to be like it's not too crisp. Sharp, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where I see bass like 
preamps and EQs are more focused towards those. And I could be totally wrong. And people yeah. be like, <laughs> all right, well, let's say we move away from effects pedals and with amps even. So I think with like you, you'd have to use um, really speakers are an important part yeah. because bass through uh, guitar. Well, it just it moves so much more air that it needs to the speakers need to be specified for bass. Because I know there's guitar play or there's bass players that play through a guitar amp. Yeah, right. And I, in, uh, I'm sure they Motorhead wouldn't he play through a Marshall? Yeah, but he had Marshall bass amps. Okay, sorry. I I, I guess that was never. I remember someone. Oh, yeah, he played through Marshall. And I just assumed yep, it's there like there are Marshall basses. Yeah, uh, bass amps. Um, Whoa. you could. I mean, you could use a totally. A guitar head, mm-hmm. but it, I think cab is really the most cab, thing. That, okay. Like especially if you're playing at high volumes, because um, for low end bass frequencies, like the you'd have to move so much more air to get the same volume. So that's why you like mo- a lot of bass amps are such high wattage and power compared yeah. to guitar, like a thirty watt guitar amp that you'd probably want at least a two three hundred dollar three hundred watt bass amp. <laughs> And because you got to just move the air and there's so much more power to move like those low frequencies because the waves are so much bigger for lower. Yeah. And so to do that, the speaker has to flex a lot more. And so like those bass speakers are going to be flexing and moving. But if you do that with like a 12 that's meant for guitar, it's going to be and it could just break. You break it and damage it. So those are the ones where I'm like hard rules. I don't really mix them. Yeah. Like to me, I wouldn't think of like you know what, this uh, SVT3, cl- you know, classic that you have, 300 watts, I think this would be great for, you know, guitar. Although there's people who do. Um, the Doyle guy from Misfits, he uses uh, SVT classics because yeah. he wants just the volume. And then I think he uses, like, gain drive pedals to, like, push it just because he wants 300 watts of tube. Just Dang. crushing. And he's a guitar player. And then... um. The guitarist who's not Jesse Lacey from Brand New, he yeah. plays a 300 watt uh, basement, basement head, yeah, because he wants just that clean headroom. Vinny. He's like, I will, all right, I'll I'll turn it up. <laughs> you can turn it up halfway; it's not going to break up. Yeah, because they'll let my pedals and everything do that. Do all the work. Yeah, so there's room to flex. I don't see a need for it, especially with the gear that we have and what we're doing. I'm like. I don't know, would you ever feel the need to be like, hey, Brian, I want to play my bass out of your AD-30. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I want, I want to see blood coming out of that thing. I, I would be like, no. I'm like, I wouldn't ever be like, hey, I have a rock of verb and all these amps. I'm going to play out of your classic. Do you think that would be cool? I guess if I was doing an octave pedal dry, or like an octave pedal like dry split, and I can do the octave going to a bass amp would be cool. Yeah. That's always something I thought would be a good setup, but I'm like, uh, uh, other than that. What 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 else, Jeff? What 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 about like non gear stuff? I was thinking of like uh, gaming is a craze. Okay, and you're you're it's a craze. <laughs> like the kids are calling it gaming nowadays. Uh, I'm an idiot. Um, you know, you have a gaming PC or a PC that's really designed towards gaming. I'm mm-hmm. seeing. I know you're seeing a lot of this type of stuff. It's like uh, yeah. the graphics processors, the you yeah. know, like you know, memory that's really for gaming stuff like that. Like. You know, all these companies like what M- MC or M- MSI, M- MSI, like Corsair, Razor, or stuff, Corsair. Razor. Like all that stuff is really marketed towards gaming. Yeah. And because I think we share the same Instagram, I'm seeing a lot of this gaming stuff now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's, uh, we're both logged in. I'm like, oh, it's just bombarded with like um, that. And then uh, anime. So it's like very, I mean, it's like half, yeah. like maybe How's half, it feel, ha- asshole? half gear, a quarter gaming and quarter anime. So that's what our Instagram feeds look like for the, <laughs> the tone all, It's all the sponsored shit yeah. that, that comes through. And then I'm like, okay, cool. So it's like, okay, Logitech has a new uh, gaming keyboard. It's like they're marketed towards like, oh, gaming. And it's like the uh, like RGB and like the gaming mouses and gaming wireless devices and stuff like that. And like, uh, like how much is that is just like, Bumbo jumbo yeah, yeah. Gar- like you know garbage and it's like okay like i have i guess a gaming mouse i have a logitech I think yeah a six g6 something 605 I've, I've, i think i never looked into logitech actually uh i like it it's really cool and i don't game i am just using it for pro tools i'm doing some uh you know illustrator stuff like that but it's like it's, it's meant to withstand you throwing it across the room it's very ergonomic and it has like different settings for high power and low power for hey, some, the macros on there probably where you, like if you do a double click it does something or yeah i'm sure you can do that and it has like hot keys and stuff like that yeah i think it's cool i like it a lot it's very comfortable 
But yeah. to me, I'm like, I didn't get it for gaming. Yeah. And then uh, keyboard, like you have, I'm I'm sure your Corsair is like. It's nice. It's but it's like. Is it a gaming keyboard? It, it is like a gaming keyboard. Where they're yes. like this is for gamers. Yeah, because that's Corsair. Like that's what they're trying to go for. Um. Yeah, and I didn't get like the over the top really expensive one, but I got one that I liked the way it felt. Yeah. So, um, I think I had mentioned before, like I was playing on like a true gaming keyboard from buddies and i'm like like, like a, so, a razor one or yeah whatever, so. it has like they're really nice keys and yeah. th- th- it feel, feels really great typing on it and stuff when you're typing up like a document or something the dossiers but, and stuff. <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> can't ever get away from that <laughs> um but it was like hurting my like pinky in my ring finger yeah. on my left hand like, oh my god my hand is so oh, no. bad <laughs> well your back's gonna hurt yeah <laughs> you just full <laughs> landscaping oh, duty yeah exactly <laughs> So I I bought my own that had like softer, like a softer feel to it. So. Yeah, but it's still RGB. Gotta yeah, RGB of course. Um, and the the mouse it's got like even where your thumb sits, uh-huh. there's like four buttons right. Yeah, where, yeah. just where I, your I, thumb. I have that for mine as well. I uh, can't. I don't really use it. Yeah, I but I haven't set it up either. It, for some, it was working for a little bit, and then the game I was using was like, oh, you don't want to use that anymore, and stop. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, and I haven't gone back through to like. That's what we're gonna do now. It. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is really cool. I can use this as my enter key. So I was using the enter, and then it was like, yeah, we're done with that. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, I mean, okay, so I, like, I play into that. Like, is that something? Oh, that you're like, it's for gaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I do. <laughs> yeah, it's marketing towards me. No, I, I, and I, I was I, like, okay, some of that. Like, is it just fluff, or does it actually like perform any better? <laughs> Um, I think what you really have to look at with some of those things, because anyone can say it's for gaming. Yeah. You could be playing Doom, the very first one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on DOS, you know, but, uh, you just have to look at the specs. I have my cheap ass, or I guess it's, I like it. It's my little anchor, anchor, uh, wireless, like Bluetooth, like yeah. keyboard, little baby one. I like it a lot. It feels like a, a Mac keyboard, but that wouldn't be a gaming no. keyboard. No. They're just, like... The, the the movement on the keys isn't like enough. It's got to be like, <laughs> well, not just the clicking or Whatever the pressure you have to put, but it's got to move. Uh huh. It's got to move like more than like a sixty fourth of an inch, like on those. It's got to move like uh-huh. almost like a quarter inch. Oh dang. Okay. I mean, you, maybe a, that's probably too much. So you know, you mean fucking business. Yeah. Pro- probably not that much. Probably more like I don't know. Five sixty fourth or something. Oh, okay, well, thank God for clearing that up. Uh, <laughs> so I was okay. So the uh, one thing that I was looking into, just because I'm like, I don't know, and it's marketed towards it, and I'm kind of like searching on Amazon, maybe different places, like gaming chairs. They're yeah. gaming office chairs, yeah. but it's because I'm like, I'm I'm sitting on this thing a lot when I'm working on you know Pro Tools and working on you know maybe editing. Yeah. You know, I should I want to start doing uh, more stuff on Illustrator yada yada. And then I'm like, man, the chair that I have that I got uh, you know for free. Yeah. It is uh, you get what you pay for there. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> not comfortable on my ass or my lower back or anything. It's just not. It's just like. All right, this is not not happening here. But I'm like, okay, I, I see this a lot, and it's mainly just influenced by some of the uh, YouTube YouTubes uh, that I watch. Are like, okay, uh, like Ola England, or like C2A, they're um, guitar guys on you know they they play metal and prog and stuff yeah. like that. But they both use um, gaming chairs. Mm-hmm. They're like the blue and red, you know, the racer ones or whatever Super, the hell. They're yeah, in. they're like black and red or yeah. black and. Green. Yeah, and that's just what they use, and they are video game players. But I'm like, just for recording, I'm like, and they're sitting, they're doing a lot with YouTube and stuff like that. That's yeah. their job, <laughs> and they are musicians. But I'm like, eh. and I'm like, kind of thinking, like, should I spend three hundred dollars on a chair? Yeah, <laughs> is that like marketing where I'm like just a dumbass? I'm like, man, that would be a lot better for me. Like, it probably would improve my recording, <laughs> but it would just be better to sit down all the time. I, my, yeah. my chair sucks dick. You I'm should get at. one. That's what I, I'm thinking. I I, I kind of want one because the chair I have now, it's comfortable to sit in. Kind of, you have to sit in the right way, right? Yeah, you have to like lean back at a certain angle, and or or it, it wants to throw you out of it. 
it's like, it'll, uh, it's know, like a sitter, de- sitter beware when you sit on yeah, that it's chair. like a dental chair like it'll go back as far as it'll go and then it'll start inverting yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be careful break your back um but what i've noticed like sitting down doing like let's say i'm there for like a couple hours doing a song or something in reason or whatever uh-huh. my right shoulder like mm-hmm. right because my arm's kind of hanging there's no armrest there's no Maybe it's the way I'm sitting. I'm not sitting. Probably great posture. Yeah. But it starts to hurt. My shoulder starts hurt. And then my right hand starts to go like tingly. I'm like, I think it's time to go. My ass is going numb. My, no, my it's ass. Up. It's my arm. It's, it's my going, It's going like up, my hand. Up from your ass into your arm. It starts tingling. I'm like, oh, I'm probably cutting the circulation somewhere. I'm like, yeah. I should get a gaming chair. <laughs> or I could just stand up. <laughs> but yeah. we were both thinking the same thing. To me, it's just really uncomfortable. Like, yeah. I'll like... I'm sitting there either editing like podcasts or working on a song or something. I'm like, man, this is, man, this sucks. <laughs> so I don't know. I might get one. And But the thing is, I'm like, okay, is the marketing flawed a little bit? Because I'm not the target audience here. Yeah. Because I'm not a gamer. Yeah. Because like, I'm not a gamer. I don't need that. I have no, yeah, I don't want to play games. I have an SNES thing. I Dude, like, you uh, are a gamer. I guess I am a gamer, a hardcore God. gamer. And then I'm like, okay, is don't mar- forget who you are. It's a marketing flawed because it's like, oh, maybe they're like not gearing towards me, but I'm feeling like I need something like that. Yeah, but that's kind of winning. Is that like, could be like, like oh, somebody who could really want to use that MXR bass compressor or the bass wah? Well, maybe they're phasing out the bass. Or, right? or, and no. they're like studio because there's a lot, there's bass and guitars in the studio. I don't know. Cause I mean, they did do the mini bass wah. Yeah. So I don't think they are. I think they're just like adding more things to the lineup and stuff like that. But it could be something like, well, what's cool about the bass was from MXR or Dunlop or whatever. I know we're harping on them a lot, but first thing that comes to mind, um, they have the spring loaded. Thing. It springs so back. So it springs off it's gone. And, like, and it turns off for you. It doesn't Because I hate the cocked. goddamn fucking click <laughs> on a conventional yeah. Dunlop wah. And especially if there's no LED, you don't have it's on. Yeah. You're just wondering just why. Just use the bass wall. You don't know why if your, your signal's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's because the thing is fucking on. <laughs> Whereas that's why I like the Chihuahua um, from Plutonium. Because as soon as you stop moving, right? Yeah, it springs back to turn yeah. off. And that's really cool. So that's what the bass one is. So I'm like, oh, if I um, thought about it and if I wasn't too uh, coded by marketing and just like, ah, you know, I could have just gone with a mini, oh, mini, mini <laughs> bass wall. As my wall. Yeah. Because that one just springs off and just... Maybe it sounds like a bass, though. Maybe it's going to blow oh, your amp up. It's supposed to be, like, lower. And then I think I saw whoa, one whoa, with, whoa, like, whoa. uh... <laughs> what is it? Uptown Funk? Because it sounds like what you're doing. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. That's what it sounded like you were doing in my head. Boom, boom. Uh, <laughs> come I didn't think about it. <laughs> anyway, keep on going. I saw a you know a review of the mini bass wah from like Rabia on like Andertons or some dumb shit. Um, he, <laughs> some I mean, some shit. reputable star YouTube channel. They're not in the U.S. They no. they don't listen. No, whatever. I don't really care. Uh, it's not like they're gonna listen. Uh, he was doing something. He's like, "Oh, this would be cool, especially for people who down tune lower and focus on like lower distortion frequencies." It's like, "This is great because you don't have to click it off." And so, anyway, so there's that, and the people are saying, "Well, it's not true bypass because it's always clicking on whatever." So, there, there's something to be said about all these pedals, yeah, and stuff like that. So marketing and stuff like that. But one thing I wanted to mention, and we didn't, we kind of skipped past it, but it was like we steamrolled it. Sorry. Yeah. What about the gaming? You need a beverage. Oh, yeah. Mountain Dew's got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, first of all, like Mountain Dew is the gaming. Yeah, they already like the now, standard. Now drink. they make specific like Mountain Dews for gaming, and I'm like, Jesus. What, what do they call them? Jesus Christ. Um, my Gil- Gilbert Godfrey. Uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, I think it's like Volt or Voltage or Revolt or something like that. Okay. It's like for gaming. And I saw it on an ad on Instagram because. Like it's our our Instagram's now flogged with just gaming, yeah, anime, and some guitar stuff. That's the trifecta. And then so. both of us are like, "Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you guys going to Taco Bell later? <laughs> I'll give that a like." Del Taco, here's a like. Anyway, 
Who knows how that works? Uh, so anyway, like they have the Mountain Dew game. <laughs> I just thought that was funny to mention. Like, Jesus Christ. So like, I, I don't know. Are, are these, I haven't are had it though. So a marketing mumbo jumbo. Oh, shit. If you had that, that might help your game. Your up your headshot kill ratios. D- Dude, that's tings that's of that good. sort. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are, uh... I don't know. I don't know if it's like the marketing is like just geared towards specific things. Is like cool if it's a detriment or whatever. But I'm just yeah. noticing it. It's becoming more and more of a trend. It's like the one that caught me is like pro podcaster mics. Yeah, are you fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need those. I mean, like, okay, yes, an SM7, you see those in all the podcasting videos, but it's, you don't, I mean, that's like a $300 mic. I own one, but I'm like, we don't podcast with that. I podcast with the E835. So we'd have to get two of them. Yeah. And we have, or we'd, we could share one. We could get yeah. real close to each other. Well, one thing we were talking about is like, okay, we're right now we're using just like, um, you don't need all this stuff, people, to do a podcast. Uh, we're doing, I have like a drum kick stand mic. Yeah. So what you would put So it makes front, your voice deeper, probably. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, uh, that's what it hey. does. That, yeah. Hey. I have that on the table just because that's how I like to work here. I have the H5 in front of me. Kyle just has like a normal, like, uh, you know, it's a boom stand mic. Low budge, and guys. Then, low um, budge. Yeah, and we put these little foam things on top of it using just live wire cables, plain cables. You don't need po- podcaster cables. <laughs> but one thing I think would be cool, and I see it a lot, is like those like kind of broadcaster type like arms and extensions uh-huh. and hangers and stuff like that. We were thinking eventually... Yeah. Getting those and putting them up on, on, the, on the ceiling on the ceiling here in the garage so we could have the microphones on there, pull them up, pull them down, yeah. plug them in. But that's a, a, that, a, that's as pro caster as a, I want to get, I guess. We have to get like a soundboard, like a morning zoo type thing after that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what the pro caster like road thing has on there. It's like, woo, 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 woo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, moral of the story, yes, we do, and no, we don't. Yeah, I mean, to... <laughs> it's cool. I, I think you got to really know what you're looking for. And not to say, like, I guess that's like, I sound like I'm just an asshole. Like, the, I'm sure the, the road stuff is just as good. They're like $100 for a mic, so it's like yeah. probably just as good as a $100 mic from Sennheiser, or sure. Yeah. And Rode is a great company. They make good mics. I are mean, they USB mics, or are they just... No, I believe they are still uh, XLRs. Okay. I haven't looked into it, because I saw... When those came up, I think I saw like an ad or something and people talked about it in different guitar groups. Like, wow, this is great for podcasting. I'm like, no. Learn your gear because the thing is, a Focusrite 4i4 works really, really, really well yeah. if you know what you're doing for Google Hangouts recordings. Yeah. <laughs> if you know what you're doing and you know the the routing in your uh, Focusrite, and I'm sure- There's still a learning curve. <laughs> and you also know how to, your DAW- Hey, guess what? I learned that a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and things are going well. Anyway, this is stop we, bragging. Jesus we're, we're, we're drawing this out, but I, I think let's do a quick one because that one was so long and drawn out. I think it was good. Good back and forth. Yeah. But um, here, this is a quick, super quick one. Bang, Mary, kill. So I thought of this uh, yesterday. When we were mid song at band <laughs> practice. All right, I'm trying to get this point across as best as I can. Yeah. These are like non. I don't know playing techniques but they are kind of techniques just like fun things to do yes for noise so do you like your uh this will be a bang mary kill between a pick slide so okay (laughs) or the um uh kind of muted with your left hand all strings (laughs) or the um kind of with your you know, left hand on the fretboard or right, if you're whatever. Um, hand on the fretboard and kind of slide. Not the pick slide, but the guitar slide where it's going like the Brr. riff. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Kind of thing. Dang. So you have your bang, Mary kill. Which are your favorites to add to a song? Because I know for me as a guitar player, because you know you're a bass player from the band, um, I have my go-to. I use these for songs to, for transitions. Sometimes we'll have these and we'll be like, hey, here's a part. So it's almost like how Brian would do a fill. And I know you're very big on like the bass slide a lot. Yeah. But I have those at my disposal to go. Or the. Dang, that's tough. Or the. I would say I don't really do pick scrapes very often. I probably should. And I did one on the bass last night. I'm like, that sounded pretty sick, actually. Bang, Mary kill. It's those. probably that. The. Boom. 
Because, I mean, that's kind of what I do on the bass, but on guitar, I still do it. Mm -hmm. Probably because I'm just... Sliding into, like, a chorus or sliding into the chord. Yeah, because I don't play very well, so, like, that's my go-to. Those are are always your back (laughs) pocket deals. If you, like, I mean, I've I've said, you know, if I fuck up and I'm at a part... Fuck! (laughs) (laughs) You just extend it over, like, three measures. (gasps) Pull ripcord now! (laughs) Yeah. Um, So that would be my... That'll be my Mary, I guess. I'll marry the, ooh. yeah, and then that's definitely a, a Kyle bass move. Right? Yeah, yeah, but be like, ooh. be like a little, just ooh. a little deeper. Yeah, ooh. um, and then I guess I would have to bang the, because mm-hmm. I do that on bass. Yeah, I do that on bass. Um, just to accentuate the the kick drum. Yeah, sometimes. Oh yeah, okay, ding. That's and like, then I don't just. No, no, I mean, to, to to do that, like, that's really cool, especially with those four strings. Yeah. Thank you. You're you're welcome. I like it. <laughs> and then, I guess I'd have, I, although Pix, Pix is one of the coolest things ever. Oh, this I'm, one's tough. I'm, it's tougher than, to like, I, I was talking about it, and I'm like, yeah, that's fucking stupid. This is and tougher now you're than like, some of the foods we've talked yeah, about. You're like, these are all really fun to do and really cool to add. Yeah, I'd have to kill the Pix Scrape, because I don't do it. I, I don't think it really, f- I don't know if it really fits on bass, but it might be kind of cool if you were doing it and I was doing it. Mm-hmm. it might and sound even lame. just on guitar, I would, uh, so I would probably. Yeah, what would you do? What would you I do? would kill the, okay. even though I do it a lot, but I don't think I do it enough in songs. Yeah. I do it maybe like, you know, we're covering um, a song, uh, Green Day She, just because I'm like, it's actually kind of easy to do. And I don't play, and Kyle sings it, so it's bass and drums, and Kyle singing, and I'm just kind of like for like a whole verse. I'm like, I got nothing to do, so I just like rhythmically go randomly, yeah, so you can hear and do it like harmonic, and just I'm fucking around, and then they're fun to do. But that's like really the only time I, I don't do it all too often. I think I I, I do probably do it more than I'm leading on right now. I just can't think about it, but I do pick scrape a lot. Yeah, and um. Especially that's kind of a good go-to, like I said, when you're like, fucking up <laughs> with delay and stuff like that, yeah. uh, that'll get you out of a <laughs> sticky situation. And so that'll probably be my bang, but my Mary is going to be the, you know, match up with yours. It's going to be the boo. Yeah. Cause that always sounds it's so useful. Cool. <laughs> Especially, I mean, with like we, I play, you know, pretty decent distortion now, like, or at least gain wise. It's like pretty like, yeah, like thick. And it's like to do that, especially if you're like, we match up sometimes when we do that. Cause you, you do a, like a longer, like, boo. Yeah. And then I'll do like a boo and kind of match up with you. And we both lock in to go into like the chord at the, at the one or whatever. Yeah. And when we do that together, I'm like, unstoppable. Yeah. And it's like, you know, <laughs> we match up sometimes with Brian doing a, and then he lands on the kick and the, you know, a crash to go, boo. Well, we all go, boo. And it's almost like we're doing it. I mean, we just kind of naturally, found that like transition live and when we match that all up together because it's like this is what we all like to do and we all decided this matches up and it sounds good that's cool i mean that's probably the the, the best one so i know it was really dumb bang mary kill but it's actually like <laughs> it's funny it's all like, sound effects yeah <laughs> do you what, like what the, do you call that i don't know do you like the, do you like the boo the or the <laughs> all right let's get out of here it was a, it was a good one i know um, i'm ready yeah yeah all right, so uh, thank you guys for tuning into the Tone Jerks podcast. Uh, thank you so much. If you guys like what you hear, you guys could follow along on social media. We're at the Tone Jerks on Instagram, and we also have a Facebook group. Search the Tone Jerks, and you will find the group. We have a page. Like it if you want. Not a lot going on there, but follow and join along in the group. It's a lot of fun. And then uh, if you guys, it's actually been a while. If you guys want to leave a review on iTunes, it would help, I would think, because it helps people who are searching for guitar stuff and yeah. they see the, you know, see the podcast is happening. There's people liking it. There's people, if you, you know, leave a, you know, star review, that's cool. But if you leave a written review, we will read them on the episode. I think we it's will a do lot our fun. best, I guess you should say. Yeah. Uh, if <laughs> iTunes posts it, if they we post will it, read it. They, they don't like the four letter words, even though we do. They we don't. love them. Um, and then lastly, uh, if you guys want to help support the show, you can do so 
by, uh, you know, going to patreon.com slash the tone jerks. And you guys can help support the show for as little as $1 a month. But if you guys double down for two bucks a month, you guys get an extra episode every week. I'm not talking about once a month. I'm not talking about whenever we feel like it. Or never. There you go. I'm talking about once a week. And man, that's, we have over 90 episodes. Sometimes we double down, but we have over 90 episodes (laughs) on Patreon. On Patreon, that's crazy. So- yeah, it's a lot of good shit on there, and it just keeps on going. So you get the double, the one, two, with the main feed and the Patreon. So I am, you know, running out of air here, but before we go, uh, we wanted to give a shout out to all the people supporting on Patreon. Kyle has a list, and he's going to give it to me. Ah! All right, we got Brett Alexander, Stephen Conradi, Doug King, Andrew Walsh, Michael Woo. Newman, you're interrupting me. Jesus Christ. Partying down. I mean, this is one for the, the homies. The- Sorry, actually, Jesus Christ is not on the list. <laughs> and this is for the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Newman, Adam Rohr from the Let Him Hear podcast, Bruce Banana, Colin Smith, Doug Gann, Aaron Taylor, Jason Fuzzmonger, Adam, <laughs> Abe Newman. Jeez, I can't even read. Abe Newman. Jim Bowers, Doug Christ, Joseph from Like My Pedals, and Will Lehu from the Just Surprise Me podcast. Do you think he's related to Jesus Christ? There you go. All right. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're John- leaving me hanging on this one. <laughs> All right. Tough crowd. Uh, jo- Johnny Ray, <laughs> Jamie Davis, Sean Fahey, <laughs> Sean... <laughs> Steve Mike, Digger from Fatfoot Effects, Alvaro Viramontes, Brian from Nutter Guitars, Nicholas Payson, Sean Arbo from Gun Street Wiring Shop, Co Schneider from the Flip and Flippers Podcast. Ke- what are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. Keep on going. Come on. Kevin Equits from Equits Guitars, Leon from Pelican Noise Works, Matt Quine from the Fret Talk Podcast, and Nicholas Ogburn. There you go. Thank you all. We Thank will you. see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.